So I got a little bit interested and thought I'd look up the speed runs of things. Now, unfortunately, they don't do an automation segment, though that is something I'm going to be trying to work on. And then a whole bunch of these are also like uh, exploiting the track errors to try to get the best time possible. This one is the fastest clean lap time. And I thought, let's try and beat that. Now the track I want to do is the regular race track because it's analogous to the main track in automation. Also, I want to quickly point out that I won't be using a uh, rolling start. This will be from a standstill, so. And with a single lap, I'm not actually that far off of their thing with the Randall Frankest, which is a unique car. We'll look at that in a second. For a while though, I thought this was my fastest car because it beat the Randall Franks from a while ago. But that was a little bit of a tainted outcome because this was done with a wheel and these weren't. And then I went to a wheel and I did it and I did rather quickly a 154, which is very surprising. Now, let me show you why. This is an old car, a very old car from way before I was making these videos on YouTube. And you might have already seen what the issue is. For one, this doesn't create downforce, just drag. And can you see the second problem here? Yes, this right here is no downforce on the front. That is all just cosmetic. So the only downforce on this ballistic car is this right here. Very surprising. And it also has a flat six, which is to keep the center of gravity low. Now, the reason why I created this car in the first place is because I noticed that a lot of mid-engine cars suffered from understeer and they just were a little bit unruly in general. They didn't handle a lot of power. So you go understeer, 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 and then immediate snap oversteer. They were quite unhandleable. And the other option was a front engine rear wheel drive that I was thinking about, but they were also incredibly prone to snap oversteer and non-snap oversteer and power oversteer and just oversteer and they were just a nightmare. You couldn't get too much power through the rear wheels in a rear wheel drive. Really kind of what I was going for is a supercar. So what I did is I made myself a front flat four engine, all wheel drive with most of the power going to the front. Now that one was pretty good. It landed me a very good time. But then I thought, well, that had looked pretty well. I could probably go with more power. And then this one was the most powerful flat six I could make at the time. And it was just on that edge of unruly. It was becoming a little too difficult to handle. And as a result, it wasn't a whole lot better times. Then I made the Randall Frankest MP. Now, just by listening to it, can you tell why it was called the MP? Stands for max power. The engine was so big and you couldn't three-dimensionally scale things. So the engine stuck out. My only option with this behemoth twin turbo V12, even though yes, that is an open uh, manifold there. It, I just had to open up the bonnet for it. Now, this one is a personification of what is actually wrong with this car. This one, even though it has a buttload more power, is actually incapable of creating a faster lap. Let me show you why. I am trying to steer drastically, and there's just no steering input whatsoever. So for one, yes, that engine up the front is way too powerful. And no matter what I did with the most powerful V12 I could make that could fit in this car, it just was not going to be a light engine or controllable. As you can see here, it has oh, 1,258 kilowatts, which is this much horsepower. So, not the most powerful engine, but the most powerful I could fit in this car at the time. Let me just take you around the racetrack, and you'll see as like, you go around the corner, and I got no steering input whatsoever. And that's mostly because of the heaviness, and also the fact that every time you put the power down, the thing just suddenly loses all traction on the front end, because it lurches so much gravity to the rear end. <laughs> Sorry, uh, so much inertia to the rear end that you just cannot get the power down and steer at the same time. It is just too powerful to not have downforce. Now, power out. And I'm like almost full lock there to the sides. Like, it's crazy. You just have no traction whatsoever. And also, you do have to get used to braking points because this car is quite powerful. So, what I want to do is modernize this with not only newer build of the game, but also a newer understanding of the game with things like downforce. Then we could try to take on this 146.361. 
Yes. Are you ready? As I am. So here we have the Randall clone, Frankest clone. 672 kilowatts, which I could probably do more with. What do we got here? The car's weight and lack of power steering. So that was a thing that I did specifically. Downforce at top speed is too high, causing it to uh, the suspension to bottom out, which is untrue. And the car has severe issues with wheel spin, significantly reducing drivability. Now, that is a thing you can do in this car. You can clutch jump and this thing will just rip itself all the way to top speed. So let's go over and have a look at our wheel spin. 21% wheel spin, and let's have a look at our aerodynamics. We do have considerable understeer, which is something that was always a bit of a problem. We do also have more downforce on the rear, which we'll probably want more downforce on the front. So what we're going to do is have a bit of a fiddle with the engine. So we have 672 kilowatts. We've got ourselves quite a lot of quality here, but we haven't really done any quality sliders here. This car is capable of so much more. So really, our next thing to do is to give this thing proper downforce. None of this fake BS that I thought was real back in the day. So these were just lips, which I was fiddling with to make look like uh, those thingies that create the vortices down the side of the car to create less drag. And this, which is also just a regular lip. Goodbye. Then there's also this little doodad, which also can go goodbye. So really, we were just generating a buttload of downforce in the rear. Oh, you know what? Actually, we were creating downforce in the front, but just not enough. Time for us to use mods to get real downforce in the front. There we go. Finally, these things have actual downforce. Now for the rear, we got to put on ourselves one of the best ones we got, which is just, you know, the one. There we go, downforce on the back and downforce on the front. Though I kind of was expecting a little bit more from this. You know, not maybe just a little bit more on the front than the rear. What is our drive ratio? As you can see here, I put 70% to the front, which was there to help control the extra speed. So for now, uh, top speed is still really good. And also, I forgot to mention, this thing does an eight second, oh wait, no, the V12 does an eight second quarter mile. Like, holy crap, it wasn't even meant to be a drag car. The front tires blew out. Try increasing tire width and rim size. Okay. Oh. The, the rims were too big? It says try increasing tire width and rim size, but I decrease the rim and the issue goes away. What the hell? This game is so good. Ah, so we lost our point, uh, 1.4 G cornering, unfortunately. We have much better handling now with fully clad. Front tires blew out. God damn it. They're fixed with just 20 inch wheels. We're back up to 1.4. Nice. Well, uh, can't complain, I suppose. Our brakes are back, yes. Well, apparently, carbon ceramic six pistons are not enough for the amount of downforce that we are creating. On the rear, we are only generating at an absolute monstering probably, yeah, there you go, 360, about 400 on the rear and 500 on the front, which is not ginormous. And the brakes already cannot handle it. No interior and no safety, which is a bit of a cheat, but we do want that like holy grail of top speed runs. Have we selected race? We're gonna reselect race. Now, what does automation reckon our car can do? It reckons I can do a 146. Ugh. That is exactly what we need to beat though. So hopefully I can drive faster than what automation thinks their own cars can do. I am actually ever so slightly faster here with a 0.34. You know what? I think we need more power. We are just going to go with a brand spanking new engine. So let's see what we can do with the, the lightest, most powerful engine we can create. Dual overcam, five valves because we don't want variable. Oh, maybe we do want variable valve lift. So we'll go four valves. Billet, lightweight titanium and lightweight forged. So this time we are creating a little bit more power. Now I have also recently come to the realization that it's not really horsepower or kilowatts you want to look at, it is mostly torque that you want to look at. Either way, we could probably drop this quality down just a little bit. Well, we have created ourselves a very expensive car, but it will be a car that is absolutely insane in the membrane. Oh, I found some hidden drag. This will be throwing off our downforce calculations. As you can see, yes, that would have actually been really horrific to leave on. 
because now I've got crazy amounts of oversteer. Now you may be looking at this exhaust saying, well that's stupid, why do you have it facing upwards? It'll just collect water. Well my thinking is, is it might do something a little bit what drag cars do, where they actually use the exhaust for actual downforce. Now I know that doesn't exactly equate, but shut up, that's something I want to try. There we go, 1,214 kilowatts. We also can increase the quality here, right? There we go, much better. Now with 80% rear wing angle and 100% front wing angle, we have given ourselves a very steep uh, go here. So the wheels will give away at about 93-ish kilometers an hour, but then at 93 kilometers an hour, we're already starting to get lots of control from downforce, which starts at about here. Oh, well, don't look at that one. Look at this one. <laughs> about there. If we increase the quality of this as well, it does create our vehicle to be lighter. Well, we've got it down to 142 now. <laughs> Let's see what this go does. Uh, go does? Let's go see what this does on the automation test track in BeamNG now. It reckons it costs 50, almost 51 million dollars. <sighs> I mean, sure, if this was an actual race car, that wouldn't be like out of the ordinary. Look, I mean, you know, you know what I mean. So this video will come out after my stream. So yeah, this is going to be just a bit of like a, a post pre-stream thing thank you for coming if you did come we do have a problem with dragging though so god damn it we're gonna have to fix that i think it's because i scaled it three dimensionally was the issue there in the meantime we're just going to see what this car can do around our track so yes i this is the track i would have been using damn it it came off immediately well shit all oh, this car is unruly fast oh dear now this isn't the track we're going to be taking this around for the top speed uh like uh track time thing now whilst turning i do actually have the ability to control the car which is different from normal usually it wasn't quite so good can you can you can you turn can you turn okay our brakes are not as strong as i would have liked but uh yes it does put the power down quite a bit our turbochargers have overheated i don't exactly know how we would fix that i think we might have to down our turbos just a little bit because currently yeah there is problems with the engine so we did know with that other car that was really incredibly overpowered that having a high quality meant that you could turn the cooling airflow down a lot unfortunately it just doesn't look like that's enough so we've lost a fair chunk of power but i mean not a, i mean like less than 10 percent our car is actually still incredibly heavy which is disconcerting it seems that our top speed was actually 428 i hadn't adjusted it since i put the power up yikes 2.2 to 100 though now you may be wondering why i haven't done an interior because that can add up to 10 extra kilos and i want to save every little bit that i can i'll do that afterwards well here we are are you guys ready for this i am going to go full sweat mode which means i'm not going to be talking whilst racing and first person with a steering wheel. In fact, I've been using steering wheel the entire time because these cars are quite a handful. I don't, however, want to leave you with no voiceover. So I'll be recording my voice in post. So one of the first things that I really quickly found out about this thing is here I am flooring it down here and I just completely underestimated the speed. It was like the blasting button. And over here as well, yes, exactly the same thing. I just was not expecting it. Though I, I tried to delude myself that I could do this. And as you see, once again, just way too much speed. I couldn't deal with it. And it took a while for me to get actually used to that one. Then down the back straight, oh my God, this thing is so fast 350 i didn't even know what speed to go around here and apparently that was the wrong speed i kind of choked there a little bit took the wrong racing line and ended up in the wall well let's fix the scraping issue i've changed it now and i've scaled it a lot less are you ready because i'm not now after that creepy message from me immediately notice you hear that no scraping but does it help with handling and as you can see right here no it's still a little bit dull to the turn in but when we come up to this corner with yes my added restraint on the accelerator you can find that it actually is a little bit more controllable though i did tell it a little too early there my braking points are still uh, under development doing pretty well here and then i break a little bit too late coming up to here as you just see i stuff it up and then I power slide around there a little bit, and then you think, oh, okay, he's got it under control. I'm actually still power sliding it <laughs> as we come up to here. 300! Oh my god! Yeah, 
that is exceptionally fast for me. And then we, we're going to be dealing with this part of the track here. We kind of stuff up our turn in once again. But at least we know where we're going to stand at about here with the breaking point. And at 150, was that a little too early? Yes, that was just a little bit too early. But we do control the through there quite well. But that breaking point, that breaking a little bit too early, is just a fear of mine that keeps coming back. And for the rest of the day, I was not able to break on that point. It was such a disappointment. But you see me doing pretty well around here, right? Yes, I'm doing so well, so clean. You see me feathering on the throttle a lot more, making sure I'm a lot more straight as I come around here. And then I'm I'm just going in with a little bit too much gusto. This corner that catches people out so easily, boom, there you go. Absolutely stuffed it. And then, yeah, I'm just after this. Shit. Yeah. And yeah, after that, I decided, you know what? Let's choke a lot and then choke some more. And well, yes, let's choke some more then, I suppose. Because why not? And then come down here. I take this at full speed. Yeah, I tried this at full speed. What an idiot. Yeah, that was never going to work. And let me choke some more. You know, just because I have that ability. At this point in the day, we are actually starting to get pretty good at this. We're apexing that almost perfectly, as we can absolutely fang it down here and get up to 150 and we break. Do we break too early? Yes, yes we do. As you see there, we kind of just then start coasting it. It's a little too late to start accelerating through into the corner because yes, the car still does lurch a little too much. But we are actually still on time for a really good lap as we come up here to the final of the corners and we are full of zeal. And what do we do with that zeal? We accelerate a little too early. Are we kidding me? Yeah. Well, th that's not a discount that I am actually doing really well there. We're going over 300 kilometers around, a uh, couple uh, kilometers an hour around that corner and getting in here pretty good as well. 300 is really high. Usually a car will do about 240 around there. This car somehow is just that good. Now, our breaking point, did we break too early? Yes, as you can see there, we're just coasting. And Again, yes, too early to accelerate, but at least we have good control around here. Are we going to be going for a really good lap time? Well, we are fully full of energy, and what do we do? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Well, allow me to joke just a little bit more as we come out here and floor it and get tail happy all the way down here at full locks. But let's go on to the main lap now. This was a long time coming and I'm gonna talk you through it. So here you can just floor it and wait for that red line and when you start to gain a little bit of traction is when the perfect time to break is. And you can see here, we get the first apex, right? Not the second one, which stops up getting the entrance into this corner, but we do hug really tight. That is a little bit faster and we just got the perfect acceleration out of there. Do we get this part exactly right? No, not quite. We do miss the apex and then we break too early. Yes, I. there is a lot of room to be improved here, but remember this is the competition lap, the one that does it all. And even coming up to here, the braking was just a little too late, but we do get a good turn around that corner. And then we're going to come down the back straight here. Now I'm going to do something that I had not done this entire day, and you're even going to hear me roar. So just watch that speed up. 320! Yeah, that is... Absolutely phenomenal. 325 kilometers now. Now here we got the a partial apex and then a decent apex and we floor it out of here. Watch it go. But unfortunately we didn't have the right amount of speed. As you see here, we broke into a and we have to like lift on the brakes just to be able to get into the corner. It's very unfortunate. And here again, we had to lift just a little bit extra because I am a numpty. Now, this is just, this is the record breaking lap. And it is also from a standing start, not a rolling start. So keep all of this in mind. As we come up here, we are going to be very careful around here because we do not want to make the same mistake. We really don't. See this? And then wait till it's fairly safe. Then the final nightmare corner, which gets so many people caught out. You want to avoid the rumble strips. And bros, look at this. We've done it. We've done a 146. Well, 1 minute 46 too. What was that time again? Oh my god, I've done it! I've beaten his best time! He's got a 146.3! Now my car is meant to be able to do a 142, but I may leave that for a stream since I have been going at this now for probably... 
close to an hour. <laughs> but I have done it, guys. I have beaten the world record for this track. Now, it isn't quite exactly the same as what they are, are saying, but, like, for a proper completed lap, I have done it. And this is the car I did it in. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe it! I have done it! I mean, sure, there's a lot of cheesing involved, but yes, you guys can now say you were there when I did it. And you can say that you know the venerable Phil. <laughs> I'll catch you guys next time. I, I love you all. I feel so giddy right now. Goodbye. The question is, is, do I try it with the V12 version? Hmm.